Welcome back, everybody. I'm Dexter with Current Connected. Today, we're going to be looking at one of these EG4 three-slot racks, and I've got three of the EG4 LL batteries. We'll show you everything there is to know about the rack and how the batteries fit in, and we'll be preparing for a future video where we're going to be building a pretty awesome mobile power system on this battery rack. To help out with getting the wheels on this, I have this on a hand truck, and this side right here is the door, and I know that because when I knock on it, it's got a little bit of a rattle where you can hear that door opening and closing. And then this side is the bottom where the wheels are going to go. I have it this way so that I could open the door because the wheels are inside. And then I can easily attach them onto the bottom and then flip the dolly up to put it on its feet. I thought this was the front door, but this side is actually the side that's screwed shut. This is the back door, but that's okay. There's conveniently two screws on here, and I can go ahead and open this. And inside, we'll see this box of hardware. That's where the feet are. And then there's a couple of bags of screws in here on the other side down toward the bottom right there. So that's what we need, and we'll go ahead and get these feet attached. And here's what was in that bag inside. We have some electrical grommets for the cables going in and out. We have silver screws. These are for attaching the battery to the rack itself once we install those. And then the ones we actually need for this next step are these black ones. These are what attach the wheels to the bottom of the cabinet. And then we have the wheels. These wheels are really nice. They're not only casters, but they also have this red thread down piece right here. This actually pushes this rubber portion out and it's a brake that actually takes the wheel off the ground. So you can see as I spin this, that rubber piece is coming out. And once we get to a point, that wheel is completely off the ground. So this is really nice for uh, when you want these to stay put in place and not have them uh, roll all over the room. For installing the black screws, I'm going to be using my impact gun. This has a number two Phillips on it, and it actually fits incredibly nice. Now, I'm supposed to be telling you to use a screwdriver, not an impact gun, but we don't have time for that kind of fun. There are plates here on the bottom that are threaded that these screws can go right into, and I'm just starting slightly snug. That way, I can align the other screw holes before I tighten everything down all at once. We'll repeat this process the same way on all four feet. Actually, if I look here at the top, I notice that uh, the door is bowed in a little bit and dented. I'm going to have to push that in from the uh, inside. At this point, this is where the magic happens with this dolly. I can flip this thing up super easy and plop it on the ground just like that. And now it's on its own wheels and we can get all of this cardboard out of the way. So I threw this up on the bench so we could take a better look inside, and I just want to show you these brakes working in action. As you can see, I'm spinning it counterclockwise, and this foot down here is coming down. And after a couple of turns, you can see this wheel now spins freely, and this doesn't really want to go anywhere. It's got a nice chunk of rubber to keep this from rolling around anywhere. So that's perfect. It won't fall off the bench. Now we can take a look inside. So going to grab this handle, it's a touch finicky. At first I tried pushing on here and it wasn't doing anything, but you almost need to like catch it with your finger and push down. That way it flips the handle open. So it's textured in there. You have to actually slide it down versus just trying to push it in like some similar racks are. From there, we can turn the handle and the door opens. Diving right into the rack, we'll get oriented. We have our three slots for the batteries and these gray parts are bus bars that we'll take a look at in just a moment. Here on the door, we have a ground wire connecting the door to the rest of the chassis. This door is actually removable. I have a 10 millimeter T handle here that I can use to take the nut off of the stud that holds that on. And then there's a little latch up here at the top that I just need to pull down. And then the top of the door swings out and lifts off out of our way. The key for the door is zip tied to one of these screws. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off real quick. And now we'll take a look at these bus bars. They are in these Panduit wireways, and it's pretty easy to slide it one way and unhook it. You can kind of see that these fingers have a hook. And now we have all of our bolt holes inside. Taking a look at these various bolts and holes, at the bottom and top, we have two holes that are just open holes. They're approximately 3 eighths of an inch or uh, right about 10 millimeter diameter. And then we have, coming in from top and bottom, two bolts that we don't want to take out. These have the insulator standoffs that hold these bus bars away from the cabinet, so don't use either of those. 
And then we have one, two, three, four M6 bolts. Those are approximately a quarter inch diameter. And then we have one, two, three M10 bolts. Those are approximately five sixteenths inch diameter. If you were choosing lugs, those are the lug sizes you would want to use. And this is replicated on the other side for positive and negative. Now we're ready to bring in our batteries. So here I have the EG4LL batteries. This first one is unboxed. These are gonna slide right into the rack and uh, in the boxes we have cables to hook them up. Let's get these brought in. Now that we've caught our breath from putting these batteries into the rack, we have the shiny silver screws. These are gonna be used for mounting the batteries into the rack. There are two holes on each side of the battery that secure this battery into the rack. We're gonna get these wired up. These cables that come with the battery are exactly what you need. These are actually five AWG and they have the proper terminals on the end here. We're gonna start with positive first. There's a little plastic cover here that slides out of the way. And then we have two bolts here in the front of the battery. I'm gonna go ahead and get those loosened up here. And we can get it reinstalled here with the cable. I'm using my T-handle just to get it slightly snug. And then for this next part, I'm gonna be using my torque wrench and the torque spec on this is 6.8 Newton meters. We're stopping as soon as the torque wrench clicks. For this top battery, I'm gonna put the other end on this second bolt. Remembering I can't use this first one because that is what holds the bus bar in place. This little finger tray here, you can literally bend the fingers out of the way here. That way you can actually get the cable in. And I'm putting a little bit of a twist in it and wrapping it kind of behind this rack rail that supports the battery. It's a tight fit, but I can successfully get this uh, bolt started in here. And then we're gonna torque it to spec, making sure we're holding this lug so that it doesn't like totally spin and push these fingers out of the way. All the battery cables are in, so now it's time to put this cover on. However, I was really struggling with this here. It doesn't really go on very easily. I mean, you can kind of catch it at the top and bottom, but the problem is it's really bowing out in the middle here because if you look, the lugs are really holding the plastic up. There's no way to really catch the plastic. This is because the standoffs for the bus bar here are just a little bit too tall. There's like a good inch of space back here. Um, I could put like my whole thumb back there. So if they made these standoffs shorter, this cover would have a lot better time going in and these cables could better route into this little space here between the rack. Um, but uh, I'm personally not super concerned because I'm gonna be running this rack with the door on it and uh, I know better than to stick my fingers in here and short anything out. But uh, it would be nice if EG4 could shorten the standoffs just a little bit so that this is a better fit and finish here with the uh, cover for the bus bars. For our last connections, we need our Cat5 cable. These are gonna go in the battery COM port to interlink the batteries throughout the rack. So with those in place, now this rack is ready to go. I can put the door on and we can continue on building our next project with it. With all that in place, that about sums up this video. But if you wanna see a cool video where hitting the button like this turns off all the batteries like that, check out the link in the card in the top corner. Other than that, we appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next one. My name's Dexter with Current Connected and we'll have links to all these products in the description below if you wanna read more. Thank you so much, we'll see you soon. I'm not sure about you, but my rack came with an extra little friend to give me a helping hand here.